Uh, thank you for the introduction. Hello everyone, I'm Zhu Wang from HKUST. Today I will present our recent work SR NIC, a scalable architecture for RDMA NICs. This is a joint work with Bydance. Data center applications are increasingly driving the demands for high-speed networks. Bandwidth intensive applications such as distributed machine learning demand the network bandwidth with a few hundred GBPS or beyond between servers. Online services like search require low latency to minimize the query response time. Infrastructure as a service desires a network stack with low CPU overhead to reserve as many CPU calls as possible for sale. Additionally, storage from any traffic between computer virtual machines and storage clusters may traverse data centers. So it expects the high speed networks to support large scale deployment. Storage by kind within a cluster requires a large number of co performance connections for host to provide mesh communication like between trunk servers and block servers. In summary, data center applications require the high speed networks to achieve high throughput, low latency, low CPU overhead, and high network and connection scalability, which means supporting a large scale network and a large number of connections. Currently, RDMA becomes the de facto standard for high-speed networks in modern data centers. High performance and low CPU overhead are inherent properties of RDMA. Unlike the traditional software kernel TCP, RDMA is a hardware transport, and all transport functionalities are implemented in the NIC. While architectural innovations, including transport of load and kernel bypass, RDMA achieves high throughput, low latency, and low CPU overhead which satisfy the first three requirements of high-speed networks. However, current commercial ANICs fail to satisfy the last two requirements as they suffer from both network and connection scalability issues. We first introduced the network scalability issue. RDMA was originally designed and simplified for lossless Ethernet band, so deploying RDMA requires the network to be lossless. Then, to deploy RDMA NICs in Ethernet, it relies on PFC to turn Ethernet into a lossless fabric. However, PFC brings severe management risk and network anomalies, including head flying blocking that hurts the performance, and deadlock and PFC stone in large-scale clusters that affect the entire network's availability. As a result, data center operators tend to restrict RDMA traffic within a limited network scale. Existing work IRN addresses the network scalability issue. Since the network scalability issue is mainly caused by PFC, IRN takes the first step to rethink RDMA's network requirements and proposes net lossy network assumption to eliminate PFC. IRN brings efficient loss recovery, selective repeat, into RDMA to replace default go back mechanism. As a result, IRN allows RDMA working well in large-scale lossy networks. So, IRN achieves high network scalability and satisfies the first four requirements of high-speed networks. However, it leaves connection scalability issue unsolved. Connection scalability issue is a phenomenon that when the number of connections exceeds a certain threshold, frequent cache misses and context switches between host memory and ANIC happen and cause RDMA performance collapse in some cases. Specifically, Commercial ANICs usually choose a DRAM-free architecture to reduce cost, power consumption, and area, but has limited on-chip SRAM. As a result, ANICs can cache only a small number of QPs on-chip while storing the others in host memory. When the number of active QPs increases beyond the on-chip memory size, frequent cache misses and contact switches cause performance collapse. We demonstrated this issue using commercial ANICs Malinox 6.5 and 6.6, as shown in Figure 1, when the number of connections, also called Q pairs, increases from a few hundred to tens of thousands, the aggregate throughput of CX6 drops dramatically by 46% from 197 to 1452 uh, GPS. Meanwhile, as shown in Figure 2, we observed significant extra PCI bandwidth and increase in ICM cache miss during the performance collapse. Both metrics reflect certain kinds of cache misses causing extra PCI traffic increase. So, our design goal is to maximize the connection scalability while preserving high performance and low CPU overhead as commercial ANICs and maintaining high network scalability as IRN. 
we aim to satisfy all five requirements of the high-speed networks simultaneously. Our idea is that if we have a chance to redesign the protocol and architecture, we can minimize the on-chip data structures and their memory requirements to improve connection scalability. To meet our design goals, we should follow these three design principles. First, keep as many RDMA functionalities as possible in hardware to preserve high performance and low CPU overhead as commercial are needs. Second, assume lossy networks and handle packet loss as efficient as possible to eliminate PFC and maintain high network scalability as ILN. Third, reduce the on-chip memory requirements as much as possible to maximize connection scalability. Next, I'll introduce the strategies to minimize on-chip data structures and maximize connection scalability. We follow these three steps. First, we analyze the data structures involved in typical RDMA data flows using an RDMA conception model. Second, assuming the protocol and the architecture can be redesigned, we analyze which data structure must be stored on chip or can be removed. Third, we co-design the protocol and the architecture for minimal on-chip memory requirements and design a scalable ARNIC architecture. Since commercial ARNICs are black box, we cannot use their microarchitecture as a reference. Instead, we leverage a lossy RDMA conception model with selective repeat, examine the typical data flow and conclude involved data structures as shown in the figure. There are seven data structures. The receiving buffer is used to queue all incoming packets to absorb bursts caused by the temporary performance gap between the upstream Ethernet port and the whole downstream ARNIC processing logic. QP context, QPC, maintains for QP all its contacts, including the DMA states such as the addresses and the pointers of the ring buffers, and connection states such as expected packet sequence number and con congestion window. Memory translation table, MTT, stores the mapping between virtual addresses and physical addresses, as RDMA uses virtual addresses in the packet and the PCIe system uses physical addresses. A Wookie cache is used to cache Wookies fetched from a QP in the host memory. Bitmaps are used to track which packets are received or lost. Outstanding request table, ORT, is used to maintain the mapping between outstanding request packets and their metadata, such as packet or message sequence number and data offset, which are used to quickly locate and retransmit the lost packets. A reordering buffer is used to rearrange the out-of-order packets and ensure in-order delivery to the data buffer in host memory. So analysis, we find that the first three data structures, including receiving buffer, QPC, and the memory translation table, MTT, must be stored on chip, while the last four can be removed by customized optimizations. Specifically, Wookie cache can be removed through cache-free QP scheduler. Bitmaps can be removed while bitmap unloading. Outstanding request table ORT and the reordering buffer can be removed by header extensions. Next, we will briefly introduce these three optimization ideas. The first optimization is the cache-free creepy scheduler. The figure shows the scheduling model. Instead of prefetching Wookiees into the Wookiee cache, we schedule, QP, we schedule QPs and proactive pro Wookiees when a QPL is being scheduled. During each scheduling iteration, we fetch a few Wookiees for batch transaction to hide PCI latency and improve the message rate. Then the ANIC passes these Wookiees and consumes them to send a certain amount of data. There could be unused Wookiees if the total message size of fetched Wookiees is larger than the certain amount. We drop these unused Wookiees instead of caching them in ANIC and they will be fetched again next time their QPL is scheduled. This fetch and drop strategy enables us to achieve cache-free scheduling and reduce memory requirements. The second optimization is bitmap unloading. We unload bitmaps into host memory by mi to minimize these on-chip memory requirements without sacrificing performance while careful software hardware co-designs. When there is no packet loss, <coughs> packets from the same QP are sent and received in order, and then when there is packet loss, it results in out-of-order packets. Tracking and receiving sequential packets 
only require several states and the bitmaps are only required to receive out of order packets. We observe that in data centers, the sequential packets are the majority. So we can implement sequential reception logic on chip that hardware process the majority of the traffic and onload the memory consuming bitmaps for out of order reception that the software process little traffic containing the out of order packets. In this way, we achieve a balance between the performance and the memory requirements. The third optimization is header extensions. RDMA protocol was originally designed and simplified for lossless evening band. It does not support selective packet retransmission nor the out of order reception of packets as written in IV specification. If sticking to the RDMA format in lossy RDMA, the introduction of outstanding request table and the bitmaps increase memory consumption and hurts connection scalability. To address this, we need to revise the RDMA protocol and extend the packet header for lossy network. Specifically, we carry the metadata of loss recovery in request headers and let the responses echo back. As a result, the requester can recover the lost request with this metadata in the response header without the need of outstanding request table. Meanwhile, we carry the information of data buffer address in packet headers so that the receiver can directly place all incoming packets into the user buffer at the correct addresses and remove, uh, remove reordering buffer usable out of order reception. Based on above analysis and optimization ideas, we design SRNIC, a scalable RDMA NIC architecture with protocol and architecture co-design. The figure shows the SRNIC architecture. SRNIC achieves minimized on-chip memory requirements, and only two major data structures are stored on-chip, QPC, which maintains all QP-related contacts, and MTT, which stores the mapping between virtual and physical addresses. Besides, SRNIC consists of three layers, DMA engine, transport, and basic NIC. The DMA engine layer leverages QP scheduler to schedule tens of thousands of QPs from host memory, decide which QP to send data next, and then fetch Wookiees and the data from the QP while data mover. The transport layer realizes RDMA transport functionalities including a congestion control module that implements the hardware-friendly DCTCP and the software hardware codes and retransmission module that implements selective repeat. The basic new layer implements the primary function of the uh, Ethernet NIC, responsible for sending and receiving RDMA packets via the MAC interface. We have implemented a fully functional SRNIC prototype using Silence FPGA running at a clock frequency of 300 MHz. The resource usage is broken down in the table. SRNIC consumes 4.4 megabytes on chip memory in total, including a 2.3 megabytes QPC table, supporting 10,000 of QPs, and a moderate MTD cache of 1.2 megabytes. The precious on chip memory is mainly partitioned between QPC and MTT, as shown in the table. For the evaluation part, we first showed that SRNIC achieves high connection scalability. We compare SRNIC with Mellanox RNIC CX5 and CX6 and measure the aggregate throughput of them while increasing the number of QPs from 128 to 10,000. As shown in the figure, SRNIC preserves the highest aggregate throughput almost unchanged and at line rate, while the aggregate throughput of CX5 and CX6 drops dramatically. SRNIC supports 10,000 performance connections, 18 times higher than CX6 in terms of normalized connection scalability, which is the number of performance connections per one megabyte on chip memory. This is expected because SRNIC keeps uh, the QPC of 10,000 QPs entirely in the on chip memory while minimizing all other data structures. <coughs> Meanwhile, SRNIC preserves high performance and low CPU overhead as commercial RNICs. Specifically, SRNIC achieves 97 Gbps high throughput. 3.3 microsecond low latency, and 5% low CPU overhead, which is comparable to CX6 thanks to transport offload and kernel bypass. In addition, SRNIC maintains high network scalability as ILM. First, we compare the good put of SRNIC with CX6 at a different packet loss rate to show the efficiency of loss recovery in SRNIC with test bed experiments. 
Hesanik shows high loss tolerance in the left figure. Its good put drops much slower than CX6, and is three times higher when the loss rate exceeds 1%. Hesanik's high loss tolerance comes from both the efficiency of CLT repeat and its careful software hardware code design. Then, we simulate the performance of SRNIC over large-scale loading networks. The results are shown in the right figure. As the cluster scale increases, SRNIC maintains stable performance, while the performance gap between SRNIC and CX6 increases. Meanwhile, SRNIC and ION perform similarly, as they use the same loss recovery mechanism and similar congestion control schemes. To summary, we design SRNIC a scalable RDMNIC architecture addresses con con uh, connection scalability challenges while achieving high performance, low CPU overhead, and high network scalability. We hope our early attempts can inspire the redesign of a new RDMA specification for lossy network, while support out-of-order packet reception and executive repeat retransmission natively and efficiently. Thanks.